Hi everybody. So we're going to go through the whole process um, with the beginner B book. So when you will be sent the book by email, and this is what you get. So you get a picture of the colour, some instructions, and then these are the sheets that you really need to print off. These are the pattern sheets. So there's one, two, three, four. And then there is a black and white values tone one, if you prefer to work in tones. Okay, but essentially what you need to print off is the, is the four line patterns. And that will come out like this. So this is the small version. No, I only did a small version on the, on the B1 because I didn't think you needed it a bigger one. Um, usually with most of my patterns I do a smaller version and a bigger version because um, some of them are quite complicated. So these are the sheets that will be printed off. You can then, what you're probably going to find is you will need to cut off this bottom edge where there's no pattern on it um, on either the top two or the bottom two so that it overlaps nicely. So just get yourself a pair of scissors and just follow the edge of where the pattern stops and just whip it off. There we go. You only need to do it on one set because it's going to overlap onto the other set. You can cut all these bits off if you want to. Um, you're obviously not going to need them. You just trim round if you want to. Make it a bit smaller, a bit easier to handle. There we go. We'll leave it like that. We'll just take this edge off as well so it makes it a bit smaller. Right. So on the pattern you'll see there are some red boxes. Now those red boxes are purely there to help you line it all up. Okay, so this bit here is going to line up to this bit here. So there's a good overlap on everything so that um, you're not going to lose anything with various different sorts of printers. And you'll see that it will quite be obvious where it kind of all needs to line up. So you can line it up at the bottom here, on these boxes here, here. Okay, so once you've got it lined up, all you need to do is just whip a little bit of sellotape across it so it holds it together. Just check it is all in line, looks good. And then you're going to do the same with the top one and because you've cut that bottom bit off it should fit nicely. I'm looking for the bottom of this box is going to be the bottom of this box and just line it up with the other. It's also going to line up with this line here and this line across here. That looks pretty good. Slightly up there. And put this one on as well. That's got to come all the way across there, you see. And I need to line up these patterns towards the top here so that we know we've got it in the right sort of position. So that needs to come right the way across here just to line up this. There we go. I'm just going to I'm going to put the tape on these two bits at the top first. And then line up the bottom. It's just a matter of just pulling it backwards and forwards to get it lined up. It doesn't have to be absolutely accurate. It's, you know, you can use your That looks pretty good. There we 
go. Right, and now I can line it up with this one. It's fine. So you haven't quite got it there, but it's it's all right. It's it's not a problem. Right now, I use the parchment paper method. I find it the easiest, the easiest to recover from if you if you don't like something and you want to change it a bit. Um, here in the UK, this is called greaseproof paper. Um, and the one thing I will say is before you use it, just check that your fusible will unstick from it because some of them aren't quite as non sticky as others. So just make sure you check that before you do it all and then you find you can't actually unpick it. Um, so we're just going to cover it over and cut off the amount that we want. Now, because I always um, stretch mine over a box canvas, I do just make sure that I have got enough of an overlap because I want an overlap to come around the sides of my picture frame. So that just gives me enough. Actually, the picture is there. So that's where the picture actually stops. So that's given me a lot of overlap. Now, the only thing I have found that actually you can stick your parchment paper down is with um, gaffer, duct tape stuff. No, sellotape won't stick to it. So this is, this is what I use and it works quite well. Occasionally you get a little bit of movement, but not usually. So I just stick it to my board. edges there we go that's fine so that's holding it nice and tight it's not moving about and we're ready to go so I use fusible on the back of all my fabric and let me just show you a bit so this is this is my fusible oops sorry Roll. So this is fusible um, and that you iron that onto your fabric and it's double sided so when you lift it up you pull it apart the fusible stays on your fabric and then you can iron it onto your parchment paper and when you finish the whole thing, you will then be able to peel it all off as one piece off of your parchment paper and do what you want to do with it. Um, it's, it's a fab way of doing it. Um, I think it's by far the easiest way because you can even unpeel a bit and, and stick it back on. Sometimes, depending what product you use, it's, sometimes it's harder than other products. Um, but you're just you're looking for a double-sided fusible. Uh, I use Bonder Web over here in the UK, which I think is very similar to Wonder Under in the US. Um, that's what I've always used, um, so I stick with it. I know you can use Steamer Seam, but that's extremely expensive in the UK to buy, so I don't tend to use that. Right, so then, once you're on back onto here, you're looking to replicate the colours as you see them. It's up to you what colours you want to make. I mean, you could do it in an entirely different colour if you wanted to. Um, if you wanted to do it in a different colour, you'd probably be best 
using the black and white copy and then just toning your pieces in so if you wanted that blue that would be the darker blue that would be a slightly paler blue that would be a, the palest blue you see what I mean so I'm going to actually with this pattern I'm going to use a lot of smaller pieces to make up one area because it's quite a big open pattern um, certainly the background I'm going to make up I'm going to find lots of um, a dark yellow a pale yellow lots within that group make up them um, and then stick them into the to the area so if I give you a demonstration I've got a box of bits <laughs> so I would find what works together so you could put those together quite easily uh, it's probably a bit pale just use your eye that works quite well that works well maybe a bit dark that's obviously too pale so that could go maybe with that but that's maybe a middle colour that may be the dark area that may be middle that may be pale we'll see what else we've got it's definitely pale that's a slightly more greeny more greeny yellow but it might work quite well somewhere so we'll just put that on its own for a moment Again, that's going to go on that pile. We've already got a bit of that, so we'll put that in there. That works well. In that pile. Right, that needs to go with that pile. And you can see you can quickly kind of build up just by looking at it with a, by your eye. Once you start getting a pile together, you can see that probably works okay there. You can obviously not use the green bits, but certainly the yellow bits would work well. We've got plenty of mid tone. That's probably better in that one. Especially as soon as we haven't got so much in that one. That's a probably pale ish. We'll probably work with those. It's got a bit of a green tinge, but it's okay. If you really struggle with this side of it, of finding the right um, groups, it's actually quite a good idea to take a photograph of them and see if they work together. So if I just take, take my iPad and find the photographs. Right, so if I just spread those out a bit. Don't want that. A bit of orange. Right. Now I'm going to take a photograph of it of those particular pieces. And then I'm going to change it to black and white, she says. So 
go into photos for that. Right, so there is my picture and I'm going to edit it into wrong way. Okay, so you can see that actually you can see there's some darker tones in there. That's this probably is that piece there, maybe on the edge, but actually everything works quite well. If I was to put, let me just put a pale piece in so you can kind of see what it does to the mix. All right, let me do that all again. Take a photograph of it now. And you can see that that one now sticks out like a sore thumb in the middle there. So that tells you that that is too pale. Okay, so that's quite helpful um, to use that trick. So I'm quite happy with these, they all work together. So I can choose which is going to be my first bit to do. And I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to, the actual B I'm going to make in one solid yellow and one solid black and one solid white. And then all of these honeycomb areas, I'm going to make using the variety of colours. So I'm going to choose this one to start with. And all I'm going to do is uh, plug my iron in. Should have done that already. And then I'm just going to cut off pieces, random pieces. Let's get rid of any frayed bits. And then we're going to stick that. It's a bit of a straight edge, so we could try and get keep that straight edge. Once my iron's up to a bit of a temperature. doesn't matter what shape it is. I really like these sort of unusual, you know, where you cut something out already and you've got like an unusual sort of shape to it. I think it just adds to the... Right, that works quite well. So we go with that there. So then we just add it onto the parchment paper. And if your parchment paper is working well, you should then be able to just pull it back up and down as will. Once you start adding another piece to it, obviously you're fixing those two pieces of fabric together. So they're likely, they're going to come up together. If you decide, actually I don't particularly like that piece next to that piece, I find if you put heat on it again and as soon as it's warm, pull it, you can usually pull it up quite easily. That's obviously using... Um, the bonder web that I use so just to, you could just experiment with how things move about and everything
And the beauty with this is that you can then peel it up and you can just put, if you've got little holes in, you can just put a piece in. Put it all up, slot something underneath. There you go. Well, you've got a slightly trickier area where you've got obviously something coming across there. You can either just do the end of the bee, which probably is the easiest thing. So let's just grab a bit of black. Is that big enough? Yes. So what I would do is get some, get some more parchment paper. Draw that shape. Cut that shape out. You can stick that down. Don't stick that down terribly well. Up a little bit, that's okay. And then all you can you all you then need to do is you can just put something in. Let's try and get that shape. I mean, you can draw around the parchment paper and cut a more accurate bit if you want to. So I'm just going to pull that tail up. And it can go straight under. There you see. A bit of fraying on this piece, so just trim it round a bit. I'm going to put this under here. A lot of people ask about which bits to put under, which bits to put off. It's it's just the way it looks. I if I use it, if I'm using a, a thicker fabric, I try and put that under. Um, but that is a better join than it was when it was on the top. It just looks more natural. So that's kind of where it comes from. And I want a fairly... Uh, actually, I don't, because because I'm going straight off my canvas, it doesn't actually... I don't, I don't want to stop on the line here. I'm going to carry mine on, because I want that to flip over the side of my canvas. But if you wanted it to be exactly the right shape, then you would need to use your bit of parchment paper to draw around, cut that exact shape you want. But I don't want that. I want a, an overlay, overlap.
just carry on building up the colour. Just use your eye to see if it works or not. If it doesn't work in that particular spot, then don't use it. It's not quite big enough to fill that area in, so I'm going to use it somewhere else. I don't want too much of an overlap. A, because a bit of a skin fill in and I don't want to waste too much fabric. <laughs> B, you just don't need it. That would work quite well in there. Now because this is a this is definitely a thicker fabric, I want to make sure that it goes underneath. Because it will hold it nice and flat. And I like using thicker fabrics as well. I like using a really good range of fabrics. Um just wondering if I put in no, that's too dark. because I just think it catches people's eye. That's why I use lots of lots of patterns and lots of planes as well. Because I think the planes bring out the patterns. Okay, so, sorry, but my phone decided to die on me and I didn't actually notice that it died on me. So you missed me filling in the rest of this, but it, it, you could see exactly how I was going. So what I've now decided to do is I want to do the bees and then everything else can go underneath the bees. Because some of these areas, you know, are going to be, a, if I trying to fiddle around these little edges, it's, it just doesn't make sense. So if we do the the B on top next. So I'm going to use, I've got this rather fab retro fabric that I'm going to use for my bees. Um, and I'm going to do it in, what I think I'm going to do is, I think that's too dark. Let's have a look, just if it will show through. I'll either do one on top or the, Another one on top, if you see what I mean. Just going to rip it off of there. So, I don't want the black to show through too much, so, but actually, it doesn't, does it? It's not too bad. I don't know, that's brighter, isn't it? So, no, I'm going to do. I'm going to do this whole area with this and then I'm going to put my black bits on, which is that bit and that bit, um, just to save myself a bit of time in cutting. So now I'm going to cut it out of this, it's a bit of a big piece so I'm going to turn my fabric over and I'm just going to draw, I've turned, turned my outline over 
draw it on the back here so that it's nice and easy to see. There we go. Just cut it out slightly to make it easier. And then remember this is that's the front. So we're going to turn it over because we're working on the back of our fabric. And I'm just going to very lightly fuse that down onto my fabric and it just makes it easier to cut out. When you're doing bigger bits or very, very fiddly bits, this just makes it easier because you haven't got a hold onto both. going to go on there. That looks quite nice. But I'm not going to stick it down yet because I need to sort out my black bits. So just move it off and it's this bit across here and there and then across there. And I'm just using a plain black. I might about using different blacks. Look through my black drawer and have a look. It's easy to cut out, so I don't need to stick this down. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> Just, I had a, a moment there where I wondered if I was cutting the right bit out. So that will go on there. Stop it. I'm just going to have a look at this this black as well. I might let's just put this all together so we can have a look at it, a real good look at it. So that's there. It's gonna be about there. I think it's too busy. Maybe a different planar black. quite like that it's, a, it's just slightly different just make sure I get this around the right way around because I've drawn on both sides of it now start to put it together now. So let's take that off. All right. So we'll put that down. It's gonna go on the top there. Oh, 
that. And then this one is going to go like that. But I'm just, I'm just going to knit that off, but I'm going to fuse it first. And then it's it's easier to right. So this is now a black piece as well. So we can draw that round. And I'm wondering whether that now, because it's not got so much colour going on. Oh, that would be quite cool. Let's go with that. Yeah, like that. And just draw this bit in. And then the head can be uh, plain black again. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll do that, that in a plain black, and then I'll do my antenna, I think, then in this one again. So I'm just going to draw right the way around.
There you go, that's the hardest bit to cut out <laughs> on the whole pattern. But yeah, I've got to do it four times. It's just a bit too long. I didn't cut it off by the bottom. all exactly the same. I did so I can just use that pattern again. If I was super clever I could just cut through four bits at a time but best not eh? And then we're going back to the plane for the head. Right, I'm going to just do it at the bottom and then I'm going to pull my antenna up over the top. There we go. It's looking super cool. So wings. Now, do I do my how do I do to my wings? I think I'll we'll do them all in one. Do I like that? It's a slightly off-white colour. Maybe looking a little bit grey. I've got enough of that. <laughs> I've got enough of that, but it's a bit creamy. I prefer a white. I got this bit of knit. I don't 
don't know if I've got any more anywhere. I'm just going to pause it and see if I've got any more. Okay, so we're back. So what I've decided, I have found some net. So this is it. I put some fusible on the back, but obviously when I peel this back, it's going to be netty. Let's see if this is fused to it. Just be careful with your iron, obviously, because this fusible is going to come straight through to your iron as well. So you need to use a piece of parchment paper over the top of it. It's not stuck down very well. Let's see if I can stuck it up, stick it up a bit more. Maybe a bit tricky to work with. I quite like the idea of it. So because it's obviously see-through, I am going to put a plain piece of white underneath it. Just trying to get this off. So before I cut it out, I'm going to stick it on the top of this, which bit was it? So I'm going to stick it on the top of here. And I need to put parchment paper over it, obviously, like I've just said. And glue it to that plain piece of white. There we go. And I don't know if you can, if it kind of picks up, but you can see it's got like, quite a cool little texture and pattern to it. Worth the fiddliness of it. Right, so then I'm going to draw around my wings. I've got antennae coming there, but I'm just going to draw around that. Got the antennae, but I'll do that separately afterwards. Right, so all of that goes on there. Hopefully it fits. Yes, it does. And I have just got to remember each time I iron it, even the whole thing, I need to put parchment paper over it. Mm, it's not very good on that edge. I'm going to move it across a bit. Start again.
Right, let's have a look. Moment of truth. It's not very well on there either. Uh, yes, that was worth it. Right, some paper. So it just does grip onto that parchment paper still. So there's definitely stickiness there. Oh, how lush is he? Okay, so I'm going to stop the video at this point and I'm going to do the other B and maybe some of the background that doesn't involve too much fiddling about with and then we'll come back and do some of these inner background bits and this black area that runs around all the bits. So, bye for now.